Well, hey guys, I'm Natsu from the Fairy Tale Podcast. I am going to be talking about Ruby today. So if you have not seen any of the episodes of season four, first, shame on you. And then secondly, uh, this is spoiler territory. We're going to be talking about episodes one, two, and three. And then at the end, we're going to talk about four. So if you haven't seen any of those episodes, we will give you a warning uh, about which episode we're moving on to. And we will talk about those after a brief period of time to give you a chance to pause run away go watch the videos and then come back i mean one through three is up on youtube right now uh rooster teeth first members got to see episode four yesterday so proud to be rooster teeth first you it's worth the money just saying and then uh you know it was up for free on the rooster teeth website starting today and then on saturday uh this coming saturday it should be up on youtube and uh, uh, you notice that I've been saying we. I have a guest here with me. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience, sir? Uh, sure thing. Uh, my name is Walkman Yexi. Um, I'm kind of new to the whole YouTube game, <laughs> sort of. Uh, but I run a Ruby Abridged series, and Volume 4 is like my life right now. It's, <laughs> it's the source of all my inspiration and all my bad jokes. Yay! All right, so uh, just full disclosure really quick. Uh, I met this guy. He was running a Ruby a bridging panel at Anime Blast Chattanooga, and I will be talking more about that later. And uh, maybe maybe we'll do another one where we're both talking about Anime Blast. You don't ever know. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Grego's Game Show. Grego's Game Show. Dude, I love Grego. Like, Grego's Grego, the best. Grego is like... He's a sweetheart, and I, I just love his his uh, the the way that he does it in such like a nineteen seventies game show sh- game show style. Wow! Sure. Yay, Slistexia! All right, <laughs> <laughs> Slistexics untie. And if you understood that, you are dyslexic. Yay! I love you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna jump into Ruby. So now we're gonna talk about first off, we're gonna talk about episode one of season four of Ruby, or as I Let's like to it. call it, as I like to call it. Crying 101. Because yeah! I, didn't, I didn't really think that I had enough tears left to cry uh, after Volume 3. And Rooster Teeth proved me wrong. I think the first two episodes are called... It uh, should just be labeled Rooster Teeth Makes Me Cry. But, <laughs> you know. Alright, so... Uh, uh, Alright, so... Um, it starts off with a really high point, And I just want to say, first and foremost... Oh my god, when they switched over to Maya, the animation quality went insane. Like, that animation is so good. Um, I don't Remember know... when things looked two-dimensional yet three-dimensional? Not anymore! It's all <laughs> 3D, baby! Well, I, I don't know I don't know what all stuff that, they, uh, that the animators work with, and I went to school for game design, and sadly, mm-hmm. uh, the game design bachelor got cancelled before I could... Uh, two weeks before I finished my associates, but that's neither here nor there. But I've worked in programs like uh, 3DS, Max, uh, a lot of the different Autodesk suites, and I have played around with Maya. And I can tell you guys from experience that rigging uh, a character and all of that is insane just in and of itself. And then you put that like the the animation quality that they added with Maya, like oh my god, the amount of time it must have taken to get all of this done, and the backgrounds look amazing, and you could tell that they were sh- they were showing it off a little bit too. Uh, like I I figured that the the farm boy that we met was gonna be kind of a, a, a character significant that, that would be significant at some point, but <laughs> like. The first time I saw it, I'm like, okay, who is this? Why are you showing me this person? Are you showing me this person because they're important or because you're just trying to show off, hey, yeah. look what we can do now. Look, look at, at our... all the lighting. <laughs> look at the liquid animation stuff that we can now do. And I'm like, okay, okay, you guys are showing off. Who is this kid? He's yeah, adorable. It, it... He's got freckles. I like him, but who is he? I was then, actually a little disappointed when I found out his name because I my, my money was on his name was Joseph because he had that like uh, multicolor coat in his like back pocket. Oh, that was my money on it. And then I found out his name was Oscar, and I'm like Oscar. Pfft, Oscar. His middle name is right? his, his middle name is Brosif. Yeah, it better be, <laughs> it better Oscar, be. O- o- Oscar Oscar Brosif. Brosif. <laughs> uh, but oh, it starts off with what I did not expect 
it immediately starts off with the bad guys. Yeah, that was that was I I honestly was not expecting this addition. I didn't. Uh, when I, I saw didn't the, think when we'd I saw get the... to see Salem and the rest of the gang until freaking midway through season four, maybe or towards yeah. the end again. And we got them right off the bat, so they were like, "Nope, bad guys are doing things," and I'm like, "Okay, oh, oh, okay." Yeah, when they dropped the opening right before volume four dropped, I was surprised to see more bad guys. Mm. I thought like Cinder just had a network, but I did not realize how extensive Salem's spread was. Oh, yeah. Uh, and me and my friends actually have a couple theories about Hazel, because he, he's... This dude straight up looks like a little bit like Hugh Jackman. Yeah, he's, a little bit. Um, but then I, again, I like, so did Tuxin, so... I like uh, Dr... What's his name? I, Dr. Watts? Dr. Watts, I like thank to call you. him Dr. Watts. Uh, immediately, now, this, is, this is coming from me, and I've been in the voiceover game for a while, not just as an actor, but like doing press with vo- in the voiceover community in gaming mm-hmm. and animation for a while. So the first time that Watts opened his mouth, I was like, that's Chris Sabat. I know <laughs> that's Chris Sabat. I hear Chris Sabat. That is it. And then I waited till the credits. Sure enough, Chris Sabat. And I'm like, ha, 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 Vegeta and Piccolo right there. Um, I've done two interviews with Chris, and he's a great guy. And he's got a he's got my sense of humor. Uh, fart jokes. <laughs> fart jokes for days, and I love it. But, um, no, it's, it's, it's really, really cool because... Uh, Does that mean we can expect Watts to make some fart jokes? <laughs> have no, I, I, I don't know if it'd be in his character, but you know, I would find it hilarious. Um, <laughs> if I'm at if I'm at a Chris if I'm at a convention with Sabbath, uh, I will see if we can get Doctor Watts to make some fart jokes. But <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, hey, I will get that recorded because that's something that I want for personal use because it'd just be hilarious <laughs> in general. But uh, uh, yeah, I would definitely put that up because. Why not? Um, exactly. But yeah, uh, introducing them. And Watts looks awesome. Like, I want his fucking mustache. Like, if I could grow a mustache, that would be the one I would want. Um, then we... Th- my, my second favorite is actually Tyrion. Like, okay, let's let's be honest. Yeah. He's, my, he's my favorite favorite. Tyrion is my favorite. And uh, when I found out that was Josh Grill, I was like, oh, I know that guy. I love his laugh. Immediately went on to Twitter and I was like, isn't it fun to be the evil, maniacal laughing person? And like, so much fun, right? Because I, I love playing those characters because you get such a lot of freedom with uh, with those characters. You never know what they're going to do. They're freaking crazy. And so yeah. there's so much fun to, to act. But, uh, man, eye for an eye. Like those are good. Oh, those are those are good characters to play. Yeah, no, I've I've, I've said it before on hmm. on record. If I could ever get to voice any character for anything, I would want to voice uh, Phaeton from Hunter x Hunter <laughs> because the part where he he's fighting Zagon is the best moment of my life. He's just like, "What's the matter? Too hot for you?" <laughs> He just goes full hyena, and I'm like, Jesus, man. <laughs> so does, uh, so does Tyrion. Like he full, he goes yeah. full on hyena at the end of that scene, <laughs> and uh, I, I love it. Like, uh, I, I, all right, so there's there's some some story and character elements from this scene that I want to talk about really quickly. First off, I I feel like Emerald. All right, first off, Emerald has that <laughs> booty game. Emerald for has real? that booty game for reals. But I feel like Emerald is starting to realize she made a mistake. Oh, for sure. I think Mercury's even starting to realize he made a mistake. <laughs> like, at this point, at this point, the first thing we see is Emerald just in horror at the surroundings of where they are. And it's like, I think I may have chosen the wrong side. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. As yeah. much as she was complaining about how goody-goody everybody was, now she's... Now she's in the really, really dark side. I'm like, yeah, you grew up on the streets, but you never grew up around this. You don't know what to do here. Yeah, and then Mercury, who's just this dude who has, like, complete apathy for any human life, is watching these Grimm come out of the puddles of ooze, and his eyes are as tiny as they could be. He's just like, ugh, never seen this before. Miracle of childbirth right here. I th- I thought there was supposed to be a stork. What happened to the stork? <laughs> But uh, no, man, it was uh, like you could definitely you could definitely tell that they're a bit uneasy about where they are, and that's putting yeah. it mildly. And then 
And then the next thing we get to see is them walking up and then Dr. Watts speaks. And, you know, you're like, hey, Dr. Watts, hey, Chris Abbott, that's awesome. And then you move to see Cinder's face. Holy Oof. crap, Ruby yeah. Dunn fucked her up. And I was like, okay, that's that's kind of messed up. Yeah, her face is all messed up. And then they're talking about how her eye is gone and she can't talk. And you're like, damn, what did Ruby do? <laughs> Uh, I've got some theories on that, but since nothing in Ruby is ever is ever as solid as I would like, I can I cannot say anything. Ruby just went balls to the wall on this. Just went ham. <laughs> just ham. <laughs> now all I can think about is the food fight episode and just Ruby put like two hams on her fist and just beat the crap out of her. <laughs> she went ham. That's how they go ham in Ruby. With actual <laughs> ham. Um but then infuse we, your aura, infuse your hand with aura. Yeah, but then we meet uh, we meet Tyrion, who is just delightfully evil, like <laughs> oh, just so much. And then and then we get Salem coming in, and I was like, yay, Salem! Like right off the bat, it was it was very pleasant surprise, and the way and the dynamic between those characters, how they talk to each other, like Watts does not like Cinder, Cinder and at all, is giving her so much shit. And then, <laughs> and Salem comes in and go, and starts talking at Watts like, uh, "Look, dear child, you could definitely tell who the boss or mommy of the group is and who holds the real power." Uh, we also get mention of the Spring Maiden, so we're continuing on with the with the four maidens. That's good. Yeah. And apparently, the reason that Ruby was able to kick Cinder's ass so much has to do with the Fall Maiden's powers. So. I wonder what that weakness they were discussing is. Hmm. I, I've got again. Uh, this is gonna be my catchphrase the whole damn thing, but I've got <laughs> theories, but <laughs> I've got nothing theory. solid. So, alrighty, maybe uh, that'll be at the end of this. We'll just discuss theories. Then, then we move to Oscar. Oscar. Uh, Oscar. Who, who in chapter one we don't even know his name. We just know he's like, hey, look, farm boy, and he does his farm boy things, and then we. Uh, immediately move on to uh team action <laughs> team junior or ranger i'm going with ranger i'm, like, I'm also going with ranger i feel like it's, it's solidified at this point that it's yeah, ranger. I, I as much as i love nora i'm sorry i gotta go with ranger it just sounds better like i don't care <laughs> junior does not sound cooler than ranger i don't care what sean says and the the fight was amazing and i was a little thrown off that the characters we're still acting uh, a bit like how they were in season three before everything went down. Um, yeah, I figured there'd be I figured a lot of lightheartedness. Be, I was like, it was um... a lot of lightheartedness, and I wasn't expecting lightheartedness. Now I will say that everybody looks so much more amazing now, and it's not just from you know switching over to uh, uh, to Maya, but like I love that uh, they've upgraded kind of their outfits a bit. And uh, they, sure. they definitely look a lot more mature. I love Ruby's new look. It's so cute. Uh, but Rin is still... <laughs> Rin is still... Rin is still Bay. Like... Rin is always Bay. Rin is always Bay. Um... He's got the he's got pink gloves. He can't be pink gloves. Can't that be. hair though, that hair though. You know that, that Rin... That, that wicked hair game. Rin, Rin uses L'Oreal because he's worth it. Um, <laughs> um, also, Jean, just keeping it lighthearted, as always. Jean, I, I love Jean's that. Just, always... It's okay, Jean. You don't need a weapon. You're the tactician. <laughs> I was I, I was a little disappointed in that because I was hoping that Jean would have improved quite a bit more because it had been such a long time. That dodging uh, game. That dodging game. Remember he in had Volume it for Two a when he there. got taken out by a watermelon? You know, like <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and now he's dodging like all of five rocks. But then, uh, but then we get to fight and uh, there's a fight with this new Grim called a Geist, and I love the introduction of all the new Grim that are showing up this season. Like, yes, they look so cool. Uh, make, make more grim figurines, make me a geist one, and whatever that, uh, Mushu geist was in episode three that we'll get to later. I want that one. I keep calling him the Mushu geist, or the Mushu grim, Mushu sorry. grim. Mushu grim. It's, it's either Mushu or it's, uh, what's his name from Spirited Away? Can't think of his name right now, but yeah. Whatever, whatever his name is from Spirited Away, because I also cannot remember. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about, guys. I know uh, who you're talking about. Know who I'm talking about. All right. 
Uh, so we the the fighting ah uh, like the fighting with the new animation was just freaking amazing. Also, uh, the upgrades to their weapons. I I was <laughs> surprised to see. Um, Ruby doesn't use a lot of uh, ammunition that we like. We don't get to see a lot of her variable ammunition, but getting to see her dust rounds this time around, I was yeah. a little surprised. I was a little disappointed. Like, I'm gonna be that guy, but I was a little disappointed with the fact that um, she has these cartridges, but uh-huh. she only fires one round out of each before switching. Um, I, like, think, I, I, I I can see how it would work in, I think, a, in, in terms I mean, of a gun standpoint. I think but. I think that she did that for uh, all right. Specifically, I think that she did that because when she fired electric at a rock, anybody who plays Pokemon immediately goes, "That ain't happening." Electric doesn't work against rock type. We all know that. Um, yeah, and then the fire set the tree on fire. And set the tree on fire. That that would work. Uh, rock or fire against grass type that works. Uh, but. <laughs> But, um, no, uh, the ineffectiveness of using electric against rock that I could understand her putting that away. And then, uh, adding fire to the tree caused a bit more problems than it did solving them. solutions. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, I do like the upgrades, especially Nora's upgrade. And I love yeah, the, where she can just channel electricity now. That's yeah. I 10 love out of 10. the, I love the combo attack that ruby and nora did like i that's actually flower power right there <laughs> word <laughs> bring the flower i bring the power it's just like wait what what how do i bring flower no flower as in baking uh season two good time or season three good time memories it was episode yeah. two that's what yeah that's what i was thinking but um Oh my goodness! No, the uh, the way that they took everything down, and then Ruby's final shot to take out the guys, where she's just like, "Yeah, another day." I'm just like, "What?" Another day, another dollar, right? And then we get to the uh, we get to see villages. We get to see yeah, villages now. We get to see villages. Uh, I, I, as much as I uh, love the animation, I like that they were talking to the village elder. I just want to skip straight to the blacksmith because that's where For everything sure. kind of went down. So Jean is getting his new armor and his new and his weapon upgrades because you know uh, he had he's got a little bit more metal to go around now. Ah, uh, that that wasn't a pun, but that's still because it, tears. It's it's, it's 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 literal. It's it's more of literal. He he has more metal to go around. Guys. He really does. Uh, so now uh, he's going to get his stuff, and I love that they added like a lighthearted moment before they sent us into full cry mode with the uh, pumpkin peach shirt because so many people were wondering what that symbol on his shirt was and now we know it's the it's, uh, it's the little Pete. bunny rabbit from pumpkin peach and which we uh, didn't even know was the mascot for. we did not even know was the mascot and then turn right around and okay i gotta say this ruby's laugh was way over the top like it was funny like the idea that he was wearing that a cute was... little bunny on his shirt was funny but nowhere near that funny so i, I felt it, like it, it, i felt was, like it ruby was a bitch needed move. I, yeah, it was it was dick move, Ruby, dick move. Uh, but at the same time, I felt like it was kind of something that Ruby needed. Like she hadn't laughed in a long time, so it was like, yeah, it was. She got started; she couldn't stop. Yeah, exactly. It was like this is something I need. This was like, wow, I feel a lot better for some unknown reason. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I I, I liked it because it shows that you know the. It, <laughs> It it shows that the, that their humor hasn't changed a bit, and it also shows that you know Jean is still, he's a bit more serious now. He's definitely a lot wiser, a lot stronger than he used to be, but he's still a kid at heart. You know, Jean, that's, that's Jean is still Jean. <laughs> Jean uh, it, is no longer broken. He's still Jean. Also, it definitely it definitely helps it feel like Ruby has uh, ju- has melded with the team rather well. Like there's no. Um, there, there's nothing like jarring about her being on the team. They get along rather well, so she's been integrated as part of the team, and they've come to accept her as part of their family in a way. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I like having that lighthearted moment. And then, of course, we get to the uh, the dropping of the of the new weapons and the shield, and you see the medal that was added, and it was Pira's, and everybody cries like it is, <laughs> cough, it is, cough. Jean's new belt. John's new, ba- <laughs> the red sash. Come on, people. Pira, Pira is right on his waist. What? Um, she finally got there, everybody. <laughs> she finally got below the waist. Oh my god. Oh dear lord, how bad are we? 
Terrible. Uh, That's your answer. Apparently awful. (laughs) (laughs) We're awful. We're absolutely awful. All right. So, um, yeah. uh, Overall, there was a lot going on in this episode. Like, so much stuff going on. And um, we didn't really get a lot of answers. It kind of ended with a peek at as to uh, where Weiss is and she's at home. And then we get our third uh, Funimation voice actor in this episode that is being added to this season in the form of the butler. Oh, God, I can't remember. Klein. Klein. Thank you. Klein. And uh, I feel like I feel like this may have been done on purpose. Like, we got to quit typecasting him as a butler. Uh, <laughs> but J. Michael Tatum. <laughs> J. Michael Tatum of Black Butler fame is now Klein. In, uh, I, I, I just realized that my garage is opening. I apologize for that. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, J. Michael Tatum is voicing the role of Klein, and he does it so well. I love it. It's it's great. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> what's, what's really funny is, like, the first thing I thought of was, hey, all the Black Butler jokes, and then the second thought I had was, oh my god, Sir Hammerlock is freaking... <laughs> Weiss's butler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and give our final thoughts on this episode because there was so much content to go through. Uh, final thoughts on it. It was – episode one was good. It was definitely what we needed to come back to because mm-hmm. after all of that, you know, it was a nice little – tease at what's really going on it gave us that lighthearted feel that we definitely needed after episode 12 of volume 3 yeah and it it was it was overall overall it was pleasant it was nice to see how the characters have moved on and got, gotten stronger as well as the threat that they will inevitably be facing we finally get to put a face to that god damn it garage <laughs> I like to think that it was heartwarming as well as heartbreaking all at the same time because there were moments of both going on throughout the uh, first episode. Yeah, it it was uh, it was good. Um, on that note, uh, let's move into episode two, and I'm going to send a text telling people not to bother me right now because I'm in the middle <laughs> of something. All right, uh, we'll move on to episode two in the uh, in the next one. We're going to be breaking these down into parts because oh, we I are? just realized it's 20 minutes long, and I'm like, holy crap, we're talking about a root what episode lasted about 20 minutes? Crap. <laughs> so we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.